So we are uh, back at the ThingsCon 2016 conference in Amsterdam, and we have a new guest uh, um, and with us. We also brought some things, but uh, first, who are you and, uh, and what do you do? Okay, so I'm Dimitri. Uh, I'm a product designer at Primo Toys. We're an ed tech toy company based in London, um, and we designed our first toy at the moment, our only toy, um, Cubetto, which is a... Um, it's a toy designed for three to six year olds to help them learn to program. Um, yeah, so that's basically what we do. Cool. And uh, you brought it with you. Could you could you show us a little bit about it? Yeah. Okay. So um, basically, it's 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 kind of a game. So it comes with a map, which I haven't brought with me. But um, the aim of the game is that you want to move Cubetto from one point to another. And the way you do that is you program the robot using an interface board. So you have um, yeah, you have uh, the sequence line and you have a function line. So for example, let's imagine that I need to send Cubetto uh, from here. So I want to get to this pin, okay? So let's say it's forward, forward, turn left, and go forward. So using these um, special blocks, we have a forward block um, and another forward block, a yellow for left. So they all have different shapes depending on the direction. Um, and then another forward. There we go. Press the button and the robot moves. So it's going to go past the pin. Um, but yeah, that's, that's essentially the idea. So the, the toy teaches three basic principles of programming. It teaches children how to write sequences, um, how to debug. So in that instance, say I accidentally put an, a right block in and Kubeta goes off the table, I go, well, why has that happened? Oh, I got my left and my right mixed up. And then the other one is there's a function queue. So what that does is it repeats, um, it repeats this line. So if I want Kubeta to go in a square, um, let's say left, forward, left, forward. So I write that like this, left, forward, left, forward. And I repeat that two times. And I'll make Cubetto go round in a square. So. So yeah. So it teaches children those three basic principles of programming. Well, you lo you lost me already. So yeah. it's uh, it is, uh, but it's for three to six years old, right? Yeah, so so yeah. I, I should basically start with uh, with a game that is uh, or a toy that is uh, for well zero to to three year old, and then uh, and, yeah. and and take it up from there. So so how did you come up with this idea? So it it wasn't actually me. Um, I've been working for Primo uh, for seven months, um, basically designing the next toy. But um, essentially, it was the university project of our co-founder Matteo Lolio. Um, and, and he was set the challenge to design a toy that helped early learners learn to program. Um, and one of the biggest influences of that project was Seymour Papper and the Logo Turtle. Um, and basically he wanted to make uh, basically a, a more friendly, sort of more tangible um, version of that. And one of the things was the Logo Turtle, it involved abstraction. And what that is, is it's, it's intangible things. Um, so we found out that three, six year olds can't abstract. If, if a concept isn't tangible, they can't grasp it. So we created this um, tangible programming language and the board, and that, that's pretty much how it happened. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> so and uh, um, is this for sale already? Yeah, so we kickstarted it in April um, and we got, we had 6,000 backers and we made $1.6 million. Um, so it's the most crowdfunded tech education toy out there. Um, we just finished delivering to the 6,000 backers and now it's um, for sale off our own website to everyone. So you, know, you create toys for children. Uh, how much uh, involvement was there from children? Um, there's always involvement from children. I don't, I don't necessarily know how much involvement there was in the beginning stages, but even now we are constantly doing workshops with children. We do lots of case studies. So we visit families, we visit teachers, and we, we're always, always learning about the playset and how children use it and how we can make it better um, for educators and children and families and stuff like that. So a, fa a fair amount of involvement. What was the most unexpected thing that ch children did with it? Um, I don't, uh, I think I think for me, <laughs> the interesting thing is I always, sometimes when we've done workshops, some kids like to try and send Cubetta off the table. 
And for me, the first time I saw that, I was a bit shocked. I was like, why would you want to hurt this little robotic toy? But yeah, some, some kids are incredibly cynical. So that, that was probably the most uh, surprising thing. Um, yeah. So it's a toy also to do, to uh, signal uh, antisocial uh, behavior uh, with, uh, with with children. Um, so you you said this is the first toy you're working on uh, on other toys as well. Could you could you elaborate a little bit on what kind of toys? I mean, you don't have to uh, to share exactly what kind of toy it is, but but and what kind of of of, of uh, kind of what kind of range you're developing? Is it the same age area, same kind of technology? Is it also about learning things or? So um, right, I ca I ca obviously can't say much about the toy but what i can say is it's the same age range um there are there there is so much on the market for teaching children how to program you have the cano computer you have i can't i can't think of any others on top of my head but there are lots of things but the thing is they're all targeted at older age ranges um so we are really trying hard to stick to three to six because that is our unique sort of selling point um we are the new toy is it has some relation with coding and computational thinking um, it's a different angle um, a different theme what we're trying to do is we're trying to um, which i guess is how we we've tied into this whole internet of toys thing is we're trying to create new characters that unify with the board so the board is kind of the glue that holds the characters and the universes together um, and pretty much uh, Lost myself there, but um, oh, that's that's all fine. That's all fine. Um, um, so, but uh, we are at because you mentioned Internet of Toys, which is uh, uh, the same abbreviation as the Internet of Things. Uh, uh, what the ThingsCon is is about, and it's probably not a, a mistake that they invited you here. Uh, so, so apparently the organization feels that you are part of the Internet of Things. Uh, uh, yeah. Umfeld, uh, uh, do you feel that too? Um, I think we we. We are and we aren't. Um, we used to be, like when we set out to start Primo Toys, um, we had this whole internet of toys idea. Um, we found out it was a lot more <laughs> complicated, you know, um, in terms of hardware and stuff like that, and it was gonna make the toys a lot more expensive. Um, so there's, there's two things that we believe ties into it. One is that, like I said earlier, we are, as we expand in our product range, we are gonna try and unify them all through the board so that multiple characters can be operated at the same time and stuff like that. Um, but also our belief, um, <laughs> whether, yeah, whether customers like it or not, or people in that industry, um, we, li we like to think, regardless of whether we're in Internet of Toys, we're still teaching principles that are applicable to that sort of thing. Um, so programming specifically. Um, so yeah, that's kind of our take on it. Okay, so uh, there's, a, there's a couple of things that I've been uh, uh, talked about on this table today. Uh, and one of them obviously is, is, is security and, and especially with uh, the toys for children. Uh, I can imagine that parents want to be very sure that this thing is just not turning around and just attacking you uh, because, of a, uh, because it can be controlled from the outside, etc. How did you deal with uh, security? Well, I mean, the toys. The toy is incredibly simple. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't require any Wi-Fi connection. It doesn't. So that there, there, it really isn't any data privacy or anything. There's not. There's not any data being um, shared between toys or between you know, uh, to our company or anything. So there, there shouldn't be a worry. Um, there's no need for like one of our USPs is that it's hands-on learning. You don't need a computer. You don't need an iPad. So I, I don't think we'll ever for at least for now, I don't think we'll be running up against that wall of, you know, uh, security issues and excuse me and privacy being uh, shared. Yeah. So, but but uh, there is some sort of a data connection because uh, it, it it gets instructions from the board, right? So, so how, how so how so how does this work? Only from the board. Um, how does it work? Uh, it uses Bluetooth. Um, it, like I said, it's incredibly simple. Um, so the the blocks have um, uh, this technology and it senses the different blocks and then it communicates to Cubeto, okay, this is this block and that block is followed by this block and then it just tells the motors via Bluetooth whether to move simultaneously or just the left one or the right one, so yeah. So, um uh, I talked to another uh, uh, company uh, or a person from a company that was also doing toys and said that one of the things that we found uh, incredibly difficult basically was g 
going from a prototype to uh, production. How did it go in your company? So it's uh, it's interesting. So um, I, don't, I, guess, I guess you're not aware, but um, this is actually the second iteration of Cubetto. Um, so before that, the toy was actually like, we were laser cutting it ourselves. We were three, all the plastics were being 3D printed. Um, and basically it was, it was incredibly inefficient. Um, it, it was, the unit costs were crazy high. We weren't really making much money off of it. Um, so yeah, it wasn't a good time. Um, the, I, I wasn't part of Primo at the time, but I've heard so many stories about it in the month delivery. Uh, for the first toy, they were doing all nighters in the in the office, assembling these cubettes. It was just horrible. Um, so that that was that was um, a bit of painstaking. And then we decided to design it for manufacture, and that made things a little bit better. But thing is, once you we do it all out in Shenzhen, um, in China, I mean, it's it's great. You know, it, it helps your company so much. Um, but even even out there, you know, creating supply chains designing things for manufacture. There's so many communication issues. Um, so even once you get to that point, things are still incredibly difficult. But you know, these, you know, nothing, nothing good is ever easy, you know, so it's all worth it in the end. So. And you learned uh, uh, so much from it so that the, the next toy is going to be much easier to produce, right? I think, yeah, we've learned a lot about about the manufacturing we we're revising how we produce stuff so we actually did a partnership but um we were kind of revising that partnership um they helped us get dfm ready helped set up our supply chain which was really great but um yeah we've learned a lot we've kind of learned also just about design packaging like even even the sleeves that go in our boxes there are so many things we learned from designing the sleeves that we were like okay the next time we're never going to make these mistakes again but even then you know nothing goes perfectly and there's there's always going to be pros and cons and learnings from those sorts of things so is the next uh, toy also going to be kickstarted or uh... yeah, yeah it's definitely going to be kickstarted we just felt like both our kickstarter campaigns were incredibly successful and um, we went first one was 800 backers second one was 6000 um it 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 wouldn't make sense not to go back to those 6,000 people because we have, we're really fortunate. We're, we're one of very few startups that have such a, a loyal following. Um, so yeah, yeah, hopefully we're gonna go back to Kickstarter either next year or 2018 and uh, hopefully raise the same amount, if not more, we, we're, we're hoping for more, so. Yeah. And what, what kind of a launch date are you aiming for? We, I don't, we were aiming for 2017 I can't remember which mar month. I wanted to say March, but it's it's going to be a lot longer than that. We're a really small design team, so um, the company's it's still kind of in its stages of infancy. So we're still, you know, recruiting recruiting people, um, figuring things out. So I think it's going to still kind of be baby steps, and you know, when it's ready, it's ready. So yeah. All right, thank you very much. Um, maybe, hopefully, somewhere next year, a uh, new Kickstarter campaign with a new toy, and, uh, uh, and maybe we see you again at the ThingsCon conference. Uh, thank you very much.